uh, 4C, we went as far as, well, <coughs> solving it, but we didn't check the answer. Uh, it wouldn't be hard to do, but here's, here's what we have. So 5X and 2Y equals 48, X plus Y is 15. We took equation 2 to eliminate Y. We're solving by elimination, so to eliminate Y, Notice that I have to make this y equal to 2y, really the lowest, the um, lowest common multiple, really. And um, so it's easy to find the lowest common multiple between y and 2y. It's just 2y. So we take equation 2 and multiply it by 2. So this equation is multiplied by 2, and we get this equation. So now we have matching 2y's. So when we subtract, we get 5x minus 2x is 3x, right? We just actually do the subtraction going in that downward direction. And 2y minus 2y is nothing. We don't get anything there. 48 minus 30 is 18. And so we get 3x equals 18. When we divide both sides by 3, x equals 6. Well, now, now that we know that, we go uh, 6 plus y is 15, so that's what we write here. So 6 plus y equals 15 is written here. y is the only unknown. Subtract 6 from both sides. 15 minus 6 is 9, so y equals 9. So the point of intersection is 6, 9. For this question, it's very easy uh, to check uh, for the answer. So we use equation 2. We can use both equations, of course, but we can see easily that 6 plus 9 is 15 because we're adding x plus y. So this is equation 2. Using equation 1, we can see that 5 times 6 plus 2 times 9, is that equal to 48? Okay, let's see. We have 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 6 is 30. Okay. 2 times 9 is 18, and yeah, I think 30 plus 18, yeah, that's 48. Okay, so they both work out. They both make their respective linear equations equal to what we want. Equation 1 we made equal to 48, just as it's stated in the original question, and the second equation was made to equal 15 using the same numbers. That means that the linear system does work. <coughs> Earlier today, uh, I taught my cohort B a rather uh, contentious question uh, from section 1.5. So we go into 1.5. 1.5 is really just more linear systems, except that we work with story problems. Um, they're all story problems, but there was one that was really, really um, contentious. And I think that it was very, very interesting. And that was question 14. So this is on page 47. I'm just going to move this text material up a bit. So we're on page 47, question number 14. And in this case, we have a metal alloy is 25% copper. So we have alloy number one. There's going to be two alloys in this question is 0 0.25 copper. Cu is the chemical symbol for copper. Well, this means that it's, well, okay, that means for 100 grams, 25 grams is copper. Twenty-five grams is copper and seventy-five grams is any other metal, just whatever other metal that's in there. Alloy number two, we're told, is 50% uh, copper, 0 0.50 copper. That means for 100 grams has 50 grams of copper and 50 
grams of whatever other stuff is there. Okay. Now we are asked how much of each should be used to make 500 grams of an alloy that is 45% copper. So um, basically we're going by number of grams. So we can call this alloy A and this is alloy B, meaning A plus B has to equal 500. But in terms of the composition of copper, we understand that 0.25 of A is the, is the amount of copper in A, and 0.5B is the amount of copper in B. And so this is equal to, well, we are asked to make 45% copper, so 0.45 times 500. So when we do 0 0.5 times 5, 0.45 multiplied by 500, we, um, meaning we end up with 225 grams of copper. I'm going to pause. So this was the number of grams total of substances A and B. And this is the number of grams of copper, of pure copper, I should say. So let's change that into pure copper, okay? So it's like we have kind of like a table here where we can just kind of set this up and this is basically having to do with A and B and basically the total. So if we have the grams of pure copper in the total mixture after we mix the two alloys, we should get 225 grams. So it's kind of like, kind of like um, saying that 0.25a plus 0.5b is 225, if we follow that reasoning. So um, now we can solve this linear system by maybe setting it up so that it maybe looks a little more like a linear system. So once again, we'll just say a plus b. This is equation one is 500. The other one I'm going to multiply by 100 because um, because I just don't like the decimals. So we get really 25a plus 50b. Let's get write the 5 a little better. 50b equals well 225 times 100 you just add two zeros to it and you get the product of 225 times 100. As you can see, uh, equation two has much bigger numbers than equation one. But by elimination, I can maybe multiply this first one by 25 and then subtract. So then basically we're multiplying equation one by 25. And that's 25a plus 25b is 500 times 25. So 500 multiplied by 25 on my calculator is 12,500. Okay. Um, qu uh, equation 2 will leave the way it is. 25a plus 50b is 22,500. And that's equation two. So the idea is now to um, take equation one and subtract equation two, except we're going to get negative numbers. Maybe it's better to take equation two and subtract equation one. And that way, these numbers, will, these numbers here will end up being positive. It's really a toss up. Um, maybe, maybe what we'll do, we'll just do it the way we've done it all, all along and just just do the subtraction from top to bottom. So subtracting equation one, it's equation one minus equation two. So this is equation one subtract equation two. So this is what we're gonna have here. 25 minus 25 gets rid of A. 25 minus 50 for B is negative 25B, right? So 25B minus 50B, it's like 25 minus 50, turns out to be negative 25. 
12,500 take away 22,500 gives us negative 10,000. Okay, now we multiply, or we, sorry, we divide both sides by negative 25, that gives us b on one side, negative 10,000 divided by negative 25, sorry, negative 25, gives us 400. So that means we need 400 grams of alloy B. Well, to make 500 grams, that's easy. If we need 400 grams of alloy B to make 500, well, the remaining part must be alloy A. So, and 100 grams of alloy A. Okay, so this is now this is now the solution to that linear system. All right, so that was a, I, I like these mixture problems just because it does apply to some of your science questions. Um, you know, you get you get these sort of things in science class. But you can mix anything. It doesn't even matter, like even candies of different kinds, like licorice and gumdrops. And, you know, they're different prices. And so how do you mix them together so that you get a certain mixture for a certain price? Or what kind of mixture would you have if, if you had to sell them for so many dollars a pound or something? Um, Question 13 is very similar to a candy problem, but it's really just mix, mixing granola and nuts. Um, notice question 10 is another mixture problem. Question 9 is another mixture problem. 13 is a mixture problem. There's a lot of these. Um, so we could, I will answer for you question 9. Let's go back to question 9 on the same page. So. So question nine, page 47. Um, so question nine, page 47. All right. So we'll do one more, um, one do, do one more mixture product. Now, um, you know, if you buy different kinds of milk, they have different kinds of fat content. Um, they call it, I guess that it's, it says butter fat, but really any kind of, I believe, I usually it's just called milk fat. Uh, never heard it referred to as butter fat, but milk and cream do contain different percents, even different kinds of milk. 3% um, milk is called that because it contains 3% fat. And it needs to be mixed with how much 15% uh, cream? Um, I've never heard of 15% cream. Uh, I've heard of 18% cream, but I guess they're trying to round it to a, a nice number. Uh, 15 is probably easier to work with than 18. I've heard of 18%. 18% is table cream. 34% is actual cream. What what is referred to as cream? Uh, if you want. If you want actual cream, it's uh, something on the neighborhood of 30 to 34 percent. You need to really have to check the bottle, but most anything sold as table cream usually sells at 18 percent. But just for round figures, they're going to ask us to work with 15 percent just to make the numbers nicer. So, how about we we ask how much? three percent milk we call that whole milk how much three percent milk uh, can be mixed with 15 percent table cream which they're calling cream um, to give 20 liters of 6% cream. 6% um, cream is 
close to what we call half and half. Half and half, I believe, is 10% uh, cream. 6% uh, is kind of a, like a light half and half, but I've, I've known them on packaging to be 5% cream. Um, but anyway, let's see what we can do with this. Well, we need 20 liters. So I'm going to call this cream or this milk A and this cream B. Okay, so I'm just going to let them be A and B. And so um, I'm going to say the amount of A plus some amount of B has to equal 20 liters, right? 20 liters, which is what we are being given in the question. As for the fraction which ends up being cream, well, pure cream, we, we need to be 0 0.03 of A plus 0 0.15 of B makes, well, if B is in liters and A is in liters, then we want 0 0.06 of 20. So this is pure cream. Just like we had pure copper in the previous question. So we need to basically unite the volumes and also have a separate calculation of the purity based on the purity of what we're looking at. So in this case, for pure cream, 0.06 of 20 liters is going to be pure cream and respectively these numbers multiplied by the respective ingredients also give pure cream. And if we add those two volumes together, we should get the total volume of pure cream. So in other words, 0.03a plus 0.15b is what? 0 0.06 times 20. I think that's, is that 1.2? 1.2 liters? So 0 0.06 times 20. Yeah, it's 1.2. That's 1.2 liters. We'll call this equation one and we'll call this equation two. To get rid of the decimals, maybe maybe we're jumping the gun a little bit in calling that equation two. Maybe there's another adjustment we can make. Get rid of all the decimals. So we have to do this because there's two decimal places here. We got to multiply by 100 because of the two decimal places that are involved. So I'll call this 3a plus 15b equals 120l, okay? So 3a plus 15b is 120l. And that's, um, this is, this is going to qualify as equation two. So now um, we can, we now have a system of equations based on equations one and two. And I'm just going to draw another red line. And I'm going to gather these two equations next to each other, right where we can see them. So we're saying a plus b is 20. We're saying that 3a plus 15b is 120. So we're calling that equation 1. We're calling this equation 2. So now notice that we want to eliminate one of the variables. And you have a choice. You have either you can get rid of a, you can get rid of b. And so here we got, well, a and 3a. So that means that we can take, uh, I guess the nicest one is this one because we only have to multiply by 3. The other one we have to multiply by 15. And so um, if we, we take equation 1 and we multiply by 3, and we get 3a uh, plus 3b equals 60. So notice that we can take equation 2 and subtract equation 1. Equation 1 is below equation 2 now. So I can actually take these two and subtract, and I don't get any A at all. And then we add 15 minus 3. 15 minus 3. 15 minus 3 is 12B. And 120 minus 60 is 60, just 60. So B is 60. We need 60 liters of cream. So if we're totaling 120 for our 
Oh, no, no, we're totaling 20. That's not good. That's more leaders than we have. Oh, 120 minus 60, 12B. Oh, that's because I didn't divide. Okay, so 60 divided by 12 is 5 liters. That makes sense because we had 20 liters total. Certainly, having fewer liters than the total liters is indication that we're on the right track. And so A is really uh, what we're asking for. We're asking for 20 liters. 20 liters take away however many is B, which is 5 liters. So we must have 15 liters of A. So we have 15 liters of A, 5 liters of B, and of course we add them together, we do get 20. Okay, so there, there, is, your, there is your two answers for the amount of cream and the amount of milk. 15 liters of milk and 5 liters of cream.